Want to speak real Greek from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at greekpod101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, you'll learn conversational phrases to ask and answer the question, how do you say this? After watching this video, you'll be able to ask someone how a word is pronounced. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your How to Say Something PDF cheat sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Πώς λέγεται αυτό? Λέγεται parking. Once more with the English translation. Πώς λέγεται αυτό? How do you say this? Λέγεται parking. It's parking lot. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, how do you say this? That's... Πώς λέγεται αυτό? Listen to it again. Πώς λέγεται αυτό? Πώς λέγεται αυτό? This Greek sentence literally translates into What is this called? But it means How do you say this? In English. Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is Λέγεται Word This Greek sentence literally translates into It is called word. But it means It's word in English. For example, it's parking lot. Le ye te parking. Le ye te parking. Here are a few useful words you can use with the same pattern. Parking lot. Parking. Parking. Giraffe. Camilopardeli. Camilopardeli. Travel. Taxidi. Taxidi. Invasion. Isvoli. Isvoli. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Πώς λέγεται αυτό? Λέγεται καμιλοπάρδαλι. Πώς λέγεται αυτό? Λέγεται ταξίδι. Πώς λέγεται αυτό? Λέγεται εισβολή. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say How do you say this? Πώς λέγεται αυτό? Imagine it's the word giraffe. Do you remember how to say giraffe? Καμιλοπάρδελι. Καμιλοπάρδελι. Say, it's giraffe. Λέγεται καμιλοπάρδαλι. Now answer the question saying, it's giraffe. Πώς λέγεται αυτό? Λέγεται καμιλοπάρδαλι. Now imagine the word is travel. Do you remember how to say travel? Ταξίδι. Ταξίδι. Say, It's travel. Λέγετε ταξίδι. Now, answer the question saying it's travel. Πώς λέγετε αυτό?
Λέγεται ταξίδι. Now imagine the word is invasion. Do you remember how to say invasion? Ισβολή. Ισβολή. Say, it's invasion. Λέγεται εισβολή. Now answer the question saying, it's invasion. Πώς λέγεται αυτό? Λέγεται εισβολή. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. Today, we'll learn conversational phrases about occupations. After watching this video, you'll be able to talk about your job and ask what somebody does for a living. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your occupation PDF cheat sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Με τι ασχολείστε? Είμαι καλλιτέχνης. Listen to it again, now with the English translation. Με τι ασχολείστε? What do you do? Είμαι καλλιτέχνης. I'm an artist. First of all, you need to learn how to say, what do you do? That's... Με τι ασχολείστε? Listen to it again. Με τι ασχολείστε? Με τι ασχολείστε? This Greek sentence literally translates into, what are you occupied with? But it means, what do you do in English? Now, how do you answer this question? This is the pattern you'll need. Είμαι... Your occupation. I'm a... An... Your occupation. For example, I'm an artist. Είμαι... Καλλιτέχνης. Είμαι καλλιτέχνης. Here are a few more professions you can use with the same pattern. Police officer. Αστυνομικός. Αστυνομικός. Teacher. Δάσκαλος. Δάσκαλος. Δασκάλα. Δασκάλα. Doctor. Γιατρός. Γιατρός. Engineer. Μηχανικός. Μηχανικός. Now, listen to some examples. Με τι ασχολείστε? Είμαι δάσκαλος. Με τι ασχολείστε? Είμαι γιατρός. Με τι ασχολείστε? Είμαι μηχανικός. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what do you do? Με τι ασχολείστε? Imagine you're a doctor. Do you remember how to say doctor? Γιατρός. Γιατρός. Say, I'm a doctor. Είμαι γιατρός. Now answer the question saying that you are a doctor. Με τι ασχολείστε? Είμαι γιατρός. Now, imagine you're a teacher. Do you remember how to say teacher? 
δάσκαλος, δάσκαλος. Say, I'm a teacher. Είμαι δάσκαλος. Now, answer the question saying that you are a teacher. Με τι ασχολείστε? Είμαι δάσκαλος. Now, imagine you're an engineer. Do you remember how to say engineer? Μηχανικός. Μηχανικός. Say, I'm an engineer. Είμαι μηχανικός. Now, answer the question saying that you are an engineer. Με τι ασχολείστε? Είμαι μηχανικός. Most people who learn a foreign language learn it so that they can one day have real-life conversations with native speakers. When you start out learning and crack open your first textbook or listen to your first podcast, having a real conversation can feel like a fantasy. When everything about a language feels new, it can be overwhelming. But this couldn't be further from the truth. While it does take a significant amount of time and effort to become fluent, having a conversation might not be as far off as you think. In this video, we'll look at three ways you can boost your conversational skills and start talking to native speakers. Number one, find native speakers and practice with them. It's unlikely you live near a big group of native speakers to practice with. If you happen to be in a major or international city, your chances may be better. Check and see if your city has a general language exchange. Chances are there could be a native speaker there who is also trying to learn another language. Practicing in person with a native speaker is probably the most interesting option for honing your speaking skills, but if you can't find anyone where you live, the next best option is to look online. Luckily for language learners, the past 10 years or so have seen an explosion in online language exchange sites. On these websites, you can search for someone who is a native speaker of your target language and is also learning your native language. The idea behind a language exchange is that you communicate with them via video or text chat, and half of the time, they help you practice your target language, and for the other half, you help them practice theirs. Practicing via an online language exchange is a highly effective way to practice your conversational skills. Number two, work on pronunciation. Pronunciation is often an overlooked skill when it comes to learning a foreign language. Most people think of a good foreign accent as a luxury rather than a necessity. But what most people don't talk about is how having a good accent boosts your listening and comprehension skills. If you can hear a sound from a foreign language and know how to make it yourself, then you're more likely to understand native speakers when they talk at normal speed, and you're also more likely to remember any new words or phrases you come across. Having a good accent means that the language no longer sounds foreign. Instead, it sounds familiar, maybe even natural. So how do you go about perfecting your accent? The best way is to break down the language into its individual sounds. Make note of any sounds that are the same or similar to your native language and of those that are different. Of the sounds that are different, spend your time practicing the ones that you find the hardest to say correctly. After you're comfortable with the individual sounds, you can start linking together words and phrases. This is where accent practice starts to get really fun and interesting. Get your hands on some native speaker audio from a TV show, song, or podcast. Play the audio back and listen closely a few times. Take note of how words blend together in speech. Then, do your best to imitate what you hear, trying to match the speaker's emphasis and intonation. Our language learning program's playback feature is perfect for this. Record yourself and compare it to the original recording. Rinse and repeat until you're comfortable with the audio selection, and then move on to something more difficult. This is how you can break through the accent barrier and really start to make the language your own. Number three, learn phrases, not just individual words. Learning grammar and individual words is great, but it's not the only approach you should take if you want to speak fluently. 
In addition to your regular grammar and vocabulary, try learning whole phrases, even if you aren't totally sure how they work grammatically. Learn phrases that are specific to your needs. It's a good idea to learn phrases that are grouped around a certain setting or subject, such as simple greetings or introductions, questions for getting to know someone, or traveling comfortably. You can even learn filler phrases, which you can use so that you have something to say when, well, you don't know what to say. Learning phrases like this will help you become conversational faster. You may not understand what you're saying literally, but as long as you know the general meaning behind the phrase and know when to use it, you'll be able to talk like a native. Eventually, your knowledge of grammar and vocabulary should catch up with the phrases you know. Learning a new language should feel like an adventure. There will be plateaus and periods in your learning where it feels like you're hitting a wall, but being able to speak with native speakers and have real conversations will help you combat language fatigue. After all, talking to someone face-to-face -face in a foreign language is one of the main reasons we start learning in the first place. And for even more ways to gain conversation skills, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey everyone, Alicia here. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, we'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, how's your mother? After watching this video, you'll be able to talk about well-being and ask how someone is doing. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Conversation About Family Well-Being PDF cheat sheet for free. Now let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Πώς είναι η μητέρα σου? Είναι καλά. Once more with the English translation. Πώς είναι η μητέρα σου? How's your mother? Είναι καλά. She's fine. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, how's your mother? That's... Πώς είναι η μητέρα σου? Listen to it again. Πώς είναι η μητέρα σου? Πώς είναι η μητέρα σου? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is... Είναι. State of well-being. But it translates as, she is state of well-being, in English. For example, she's fine. Είναι καλά. Είναι καλά. Here are a few expressions related to well-being that you can use with this pattern. Great. Υπέροχα. Υπέροχα. Fine. Καλά. Καλά. So-so. Έτσι και έτσι. Έτσι και έτσι. Bad. Άσχημα. Asima. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Πώς είναι η μητέρα σου? Είναι υπέροχα. Πώς είναι η μητέρα σου? Είναι έτσι και έτσι. Πώς είναι η μητέρα σου? Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, how's your mother? Imagine she's great. Do you remember how to say, great? Υπέροχα. Υπέροχα. 
say, she's great. Now, answer the question saying, she's great. Now imagine she's so-so. Do you remember how to say so-so? Say, she's so-so. Now, answer the question saying she's so-so. Now imagine she's bad. Do you remember how to say bad? Say, she's bad. Now answer the question saying she's bad. You've studied for a while and are ready to talk to people and practice what you've learned, but where do you start? Starting a conversation in a new language can seem a bit intimidating. How do you just jump into it? In this video, we'll look at five ways to start conversations. Number one, introduce yourself in your target language. This is usually one of the first things you learn when you start studying a new language. And sometimes starting a conversation or continuing one is as simple as introducing yourself. Number two, talking about the weather. This is a universal talking point. People talk about the weather all over the world. And just saying, it's really nice today is enough to start a conversation. A great way to practice your weather conversation skills is to check out our can-do lesson pathway. This series of lessons teaches you how to talk about the weather in your target language. Number three, give compliments. Compliments are a great way to start a conversation. You can compliment something about your conversation partner's city, country, or something specific to them personally. Hey, your bag is super cute, or that ice cream looks delicious. These kinds of compliments can lead to further conversation about what you complimented. In this case, it could be fashion or a local restaurant. This is a great way to make quick connections with people. Number four, ask for help. For example, you can ask for directions, ask about prices, or request recommendations for restaurants or shopping spots and let the conversation go from there. People are usually happy to lend a helping hand to tourists who are visiting their city. Number five, learn phrases for transactions. This can include getting a room at a hotel or telling a taxi driver where to go. When you're traveling overseas, you'll need to talk to other people in your target language. And while this might be a bit scary at first, you'll find that the people you meet are just happy that you're trying to communicate with them. So get started talking in your target language now. For even more tips on how to start conversations, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey everyone, Alicia here. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, we'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, what's the matter? After watching this video, you'll be able to make complaints and ask someone else if they're having any issues. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real-life situations, click the link in the description to download your Making Complaints PDF cheat sheet for free. Now let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Hola, taxi. Το γραφείο είναι σκοτεινό. 
once more with the English translation. Hola, Daxi. What's the matter? Το γραφείο είναι σκοτεινό. The office is dark. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, What's the matter? That's... Hola, Daxi. Listen to it again. Hola, e Daxi. Hola, e Daxi. This Greek sentence literally translates into, All in order? But it means, What's the matter? in English. Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is... Το γραφείο είναι... Adjective. The office is adjective. For example, the office is dark. Το γραφείο είναι σκοτεινό. Το γραφείο είναι σκοτεινό. Here are a few more examples you can use with the same pattern to make complaints. Dark. Scotino. Scotino. Small. Micro. Micro. Horrible. Apesio. Apesio. Dirty. Vromico. Vromico. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Hola, Daxi. Το γραφείο είναι μικρό. Hola, Daxi. Το γραφείο είναι απέσιο. Hola, Daxi. Το γραφείο είναι βρώμικο. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what's the matter? Hola, Daxi. Now imagine the office is small. Do you remember how to say, small? Micro. Micro. Say, the office is small. Το γραφείο είναι μικρό. Now, answer the question saying the office is small. Όλα εντάξει. Το γραφείο είναι μικρό. Now imagine the office is horrible. Do you remember how to say horrible? Απέσιο. Απέσιο. Say, the office is horrible. Το γραφείο είναι απέσιο. Now answer the question saying the office is horrible. Όλα εντάξει. Το γραφείο είναι απέσιο. Now imagine the office is dirty. Do you remember how to say dirty? Βρώμικο. Βρώμικο. Say, the office is dirty. Το γραφείο είναι βρώμικο. Now, answer the question, saying the office is dirty. Όλα εντάξει. Το γραφείο είναι βρώμικο. Want to speak your target language with confidence and impress native speakers? When learning to speak a new language, you have lots of things to think about, including grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Because you're thinking of all of these things and trying to speak, it can be difficult to communicate with confidence, especially in the beginning. This is why it's helpful to make confidence-building exercises part of your language learning process. In this video, you'll learn seven ways to boost your confidence. One, read out loud. 
This might seem pretty basic, but it's a great way to practice speaking. Reading aloud lets you practice speaking without having to think about grammar or things to talk about. Reading out loud lets you focus on your pronunciation and the rhythm of the language. It can help you learn to speak more smoothly and quickly without even thinking about it. If you're using our lessons, read the dialogue out loud as you listen. You can read along with the dialogue tool, the lesson notes, or the transcript. Two, read like a child. This might sound strange, but think about children learning to read. They go slow and sound everything out. Maybe it takes two or three tries before they read a new word smoothly, and a few more tries before they can read it at a natural pace. This example applies to language learning too. If you find a complex sentence in something you're reading, read it slowly at first, then speed up. With practice, you'll be able to say it easily. It might feel a bit silly to speak very slowly, but this kind of practice can help you identify tough sounds you might miss or say incorrectly when reading quickly. Three, use the dialogue breakdown tool. If you're using our site, this is a great tool to take advantage of. It breaks down lesson conversations into individual lines. You can listen to the audio for each line, learn what each line means, and can reread and review as much as you want. Four, use the voice recorder to record and compare yourself with native speakers. Just click on the microphone icon next to each line in the dialogue section. You can use this tool to perfect your pronunciation if you like, but this is also something you can use to work on speaking with confidence at native level speed. You'll find this tool in the dialogue section of all of our lessons. Five, repeat and review old lesson conversations. Reviewing what you've studied in the past is the best way to make sure you maintain what you've learned. Go back to older lessons, download the lesson dialogue tracks and re-listen to the conversations again and again. Or you can reread the dialogue lines from previous lessons until you've mastered them all. Six, shadow conversations. Repeat what you hear out loud. This tactic is important, but it can be tricky when you're doing a brand new lesson. If you're reviewing dialogues from lessons you've done though, it's super easy to do. Just listen to the dialogue and repeat what you hear. Shadowing means mimicking the speaker as soon as they speak, following their intonation and rhythms as closely as possible. Seven, send recordings to your Premium Plus teacher. If you want to speak with confidence, there's no better confidence boost than feedback from a native speaker. And you get just that with a Premium Plus teacher. You can record yourself reciting a lesson dialogue or any dialogue of your own, and your teacher will give you specific tips on how to improve. From the tips your teacher gives you, choose at least one and practice, practice, practice. Being able to react quickly and with confidence in a conversation is typically not something you can do on your first try, but if you continue practicing, you'll gradually find yourself speaking with ease. And for even more ways to build your speaking confidence, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, we'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, what's your favorite number? After watching this video, you'll be able to say many numbers and ask someone their favorite number. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Talking About Numbers PDF cheat sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Pius ini o rapimenos o arithmos? To efta. Once more with the English translation. What's your favorite number? It's seven. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, What's your favorite number? That's 
Ποιος είναι ο αγαπημένος σου αριθμός? Listen to it again. Ποιος είναι ο αγαπημένος σου αριθμός? Ποιος είναι ο αγαπημένος σου αριθμός? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is... Το... Number. This Greek sentence literally translates into the number. But it means its number. For example, it's seven. Το εφτά. Το εφτά. Here are a few more numbers you can use with the same pattern. Seven. Εφτά. Εφτά. Two. Δύο. Δύο. Four. Τέσσερα. Τέσσερα. Nine. Εννέα. Εννέα. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Ποιος είναι ο αγαπημένος ο αριθμός? Το δύο. Ποιος είναι ο αγαπημένος ο αριθμός? Το τέσσερα. Ποιος είναι ο αγαπημένος ο αριθμός? Το εννέα. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what's your favorite number? Ποιος είναι ο αγαπημένος ο αριθμός? Imagine it's two. Do you remember how to say, two? Δύο. Δύο. Say, it's two. Now answer the question saying, it's two. Ποιος είναι ο αγαπημένος ο αριθμός? Το δύο. Now imagine it's four. Do you remember how to say four? Τέσσερα. Τέσσερα. Say, it's four. Now, answer the question by saying, it's four. Ποιος είναι ο αγαπημένος ο αριθμός? Το τέσσερα. Now, imagine it's nine. Do you remember how to say nine? Εννέα. Εννέα. Say, it's nine. Now, answer the question saying, it's nine. Ποιος είναι ο αγαπημένος ο αριθμός? Το εννέα. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, we'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, what kind of movies do you like? After watching this video, you'll be able to talk about movies and ask other people about their favorite kinds of movies. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Talking About Movies and TV PDF cheat sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. 
ποιο είναι το αγαπημένο σου κινηματογραφικό είδος. Μου αρέσουν οι ταινίες τρόμου. Once more with the English translation. Ποιο είναι το αγαπημένο σου κινηματογραφικό είδος. What's your favorite movie genre? Μου αρέσουν οι ταινίες τρόμου. I like horror movies. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say What's your favorite movie genre? That's Ποιο είναι το αγαπημένο σου κινηματογραφικό είδος? Listen to it again. Ποιο είναι το αγαπημένο σου κινηματογραφικό είδος? Ποιο είναι το αγαπημένο σου κινηματογραφικό είδος? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is Μου αρέσουν. Type of movie. I like type of movie. For example, I like horror movies. Μου αρέσουν οι ταινίες τρόμου. Μου αρέσουν οι ταινίες τρόμου. Here are a few more kinds of movies you can use with the same pattern to talk about movies. Horror movies. Οι ταινίες τρόμου. Οι ταινίες τρόμου. Comedy. Οι κομμωδίες. Οι κομμωδίες. Fantasy movies. Οι ταινίες φαντασίας. Οι ταινίες φαντασίας. Romantic movies. Οι ρομαντικές ταινίες. Οι ρομαντικές ταινίες. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Ποιο είναι το αγαπημένο σου κινηματογραφικό είδος? Μου αρέσουν οι κομμωδίες. Ποιο είναι το αγαπημένο σου κινηματογραφικό είδος? Μου αρέσουν οι ταινίες φαντασίας. Ποιο είναι το αγαπημένο σου κινηματογραφικό είδος? Μου αρέσουν οι ρομαντικές ταινίες. Οκ, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say... What's your favorite movie genre? Ποιο είναι το αγαπημένο σου κινηματογραφικό είδος? Imagine you like comedies. Do you remember how to say comedy? Οι κομμωδίες. Οι κομμωδίες. Say, I like comedy. Μου αρέσουν οι κομμωδίες. Now, answer the question saying that you like comedies. Ποιο είναι το αγαπημένο σου κινηματογραφικό είδος? Μου αρέσουν οι κομμωδίες. Now, imagine that you like fantasy movies. Do you remember how to say fantasy movies? Οι ταινίες φαντασίας. Οι ταινίες φαντασίας. Say, I like fantasy movies. Μου αρέσουν οι ταινίες φαντασίας. Now, answer the question saying you like fantasy movies. Ποιο είναι το αγαπημένο σου κινηματογραφικό είδος? Μου αρέσουν οι ταινίες φαντασίας. Now imagine you like romantic movies. Do you remember how to say romantic movies? Οι ρομαντικές ταινίες. Οι ρομαντικές ταινίες. Say, I like romantic movies. (laughs) 
μου αρέσουν οι ρομαντικές ταινίες. Now answer the question saying you like romantic movies. Ποιο είναι το αγαπημένο σου κινηματογραφικό είδος? Μου αρέσουν οι ρομαντικές ταινίες. Want to speak real Greek from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at greekpod101.com. Want to speak and understand more of your target language? If so, of course, you'll need to know more words and phrases than you do now. In this video, we'll cover five ways to master new words and phrases fast. Number one, use our free vocabulary list. This is a free library of vocabulary and phrase lessons for all kinds of situations. You can learn words and phrases for current events, holidays like Halloween and Thanksgiving, and useful topics like the top 10 ways to say hello, conversational phrases, and more. You'll learn phrases that you won't find in textbooks. If you want to learn extra fast, use the slideshow tool. Just tap or click on View Slideshow, then sit back and review the words and phrases. Find the vocabulary list in the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site. These vocabulary lists are free for all users. Number two, take the audio and video lessons. One of the best ways to learn new words is by hearing and using them in conversations. This is because it gives you the opportunity to understand how the words are actually used. In every lesson dialogue, you'll likely come across some words you don't know. But don't worry, because our teachers translate everything. When you hear the conversation again at the end of the lesson, you'll be familiar with the words you didn't know at first. Number three, learn with our 2,000 most common words list. A quick question. How many words do you think you need for conversational fluency? 3,000? 5,000? It's actually not as many as you think. Language experts say you need about 1,500 words to reach conversational fluency. With our 2,000 most common words list, you'll get access to key vocabulary words you need to boost your conversation skills. The words are broken down into simple categories, such as adjectives, nouns, verbs, food, drinks, numbers, months, and so on. So you can go category by category and focus on what you're most interested in first. With this tip, we're not talking about paper flashcards. We're talking about the smart flashcards that you can find in our premium study tools. This is an automatic system individualized for each member based on their study needs. First, you'll use the cards to check your knowledge. Then, according to your answers, the cards will be sorted according to which words you need more practice with. Words that you struggle with will be shown to you more and more. You'll see words that you know well less often. This system helps you study more efficiently. It displays the words you need to work on and knows when you should refresh your knowledge. This helps make sure you don't forget vocabulary. In every study session, these cards will help you refresh your memory on the words you learned last time and introduce new words. Number five, use the words. After you learn a new word, using it right away is crucial to remembering it. So when you're done with a lesson or a vocab list, here's something you can do. Leave a comment. Make up a sample sentence and post it in the comment section. Write it down in a notebook or shadow the word with a lessons dialogue. Our language learning program is full of tools that can help you speak more. Just pick one and get started. If you want to unlock all of these study tools, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, you'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, what are you doing during the holiday? After watching this video, you'll be able to talk about your holiday plans. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your National Holidays PDF Cheat Sheet for free.
Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Τι θα κάνεις στις απόκριες? Σχεδιάζω να πάω στην παραλία. Once more with the English translation. Τι θα κάνεις στις απόκριες? What are you doing for carnival? Σχεδιάζω να πάω στην παραλία. I'm planning to go to the beach. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, What are you doing for carnival? That's... Τι θα κάνεις στις απόκριες? Listen to it again. Τι θα κάνεις στις απόκριες? Τι θα κάνεις στις απόκριες? This Greek sentence literally translates as, What are you doing during carnival? But it means, What are you doing for carnival? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is, Σχεδιάζω να Plan. I'm planning to plan. For example, I'm planning to go to the beach. Σχεδιάζω να πάω στην παραλία. Σχεδιάζω να πάω στην παραλία. Here are a few more phrases you can use with the same pattern to talk about your plans. Go to the beach. Πάω στην παραλία. Πάω στην παραλία. Travel. Ταξιδέψω. Ταξιδέψω. Stay home. Μείνω σπίτι. Μείνω σπίτι. Go to the movies. Πάω σινεμά. Πάω σινεμά. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Τι θα κάνει στι απόκριε? Σχεδιάζω να ταξιδέψω. Τι θα κάνει στι απόκριε? Σχεδιάζω να μείνω σπίτι. Τι θα κάνει στι απόκριε? Σχεδιάζω να πάω σινεμά. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, What are you doing for carnival? Τι θα κάνει στι απόκριε? Imagine you're planning to travel. Do you remember how to say, Travel? Ταξιδέψω. Ταξιδέψω. Say, I'm planning to travel. Σχεδιάζω να ταξιδέψω. Now, answer the question saying you're planning to travel. Τι θα κάνεις στις απόκριες? Σχεδιάζω να ταξιδέψω. Now, imagine you're planning to stay home. Do you remember how to say, stay home? Μείνω σπίτι. Μείνω σπίτι. Say, I'm planning to stay home. Σχεδιάζω να μείνω σπίτι. Now, answer the question saying you're planning to stay home. Τι θα κάνεις στις απόκριες? Σχεδιάζω να μείνω σπίτι. Now imagine you're planning to go to the movies. Do you remember how to say, go to the movies? Πάω σινεμά. Πάω σινεμά. Say, I'm planning to go to the movies. Σχεδιάζω να πάω σινεμά. Now, answer the question saying you're planning to go to the movies. 
Τι θα κάνει στι απόκριε. Σχεδιάζω να πάω σινεμά. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, you'll learn conversational phrases to use when talking on the phone. After watching this video, you'll be able to ask for someone on the phone and to put someone on hold. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Making a Phone Call PDF cheat sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Γεια σα. Θα ήθελα να μιλήσω με τον υπεύθυνο. Μάλιστα. Μια στιγμή, παρακαλώ. Once more with the English translation. Γεια σα. Θα ήθελα να μιλήσω με τον υπεύθυνο. Hello. I'd like to speak with the person in charge. Μάλιστα. Μια στιγμή, παρακαλώ. Okay. Just a moment. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say hello on the phone. That's. Γεια σας. Γεια σας. Then, you'll need to learn how to say, I'd like to speak with person. The pattern is, Θα ήθελα να μιλήσω με person. For example, Hello, I'd like to speak with the person in charge. Γεια σας. Θα ήθελα να μιλήσω με τον υπεύθυνο. Γεια σας. Θα ήθελα να μιλήσω με τον υπεύθυνο. Now, how do you answer this question? Μάλιστα. Μια στιγμή, παρακαλώ. Okay, just a moment. Listen to it again. Μάλιστα. Μια στιγμή, παρακαλώ. Μάλιστα. Μια στιγμή, παρακαλώ. This Greek sentence literally translates as Okay, one moment, please. But it means Okay, just a moment. Here are a few more phrases you can use with the same pattern to talk on the phone. The person in charge. Τον υπεύθυνο. Τον υπεύθυνο. A sales representative. Έναν εκπρόσωπο πολίσεων. Έναν εκπρόσωπο πολίσεων. The manager. Τον διευθυντή. Τον διευθυντή. Customer service. Την εξυπηρέτηση πελατών. Την εξυπηρέτηση πελατών. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Θα ήθελα να μιλήσω με έναν εκπρόσωπο πολίσεων. Μάλιστα. Μια στιγμή, παρακαλώ. Θα ήθελα να μιλήσω με τον διευθυντή. Μάλιστα. Μια στιγμή, παρακαλώ. Θα ήθελα να μιλήσω με την εξυπηρέτηση πελατών. Μάλιστα. Μια στιγμή, παρακαλώ. Οκ. Now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, I'd like to speak with, person? Θα ήθελα να μιλήσω με... Person. And, how do you answer it? Μάλιστα. Μια στιγμή, παρακαλώ. Imagine you want to talk to a sales representative. Do you remember how to say a sales representative? Έναν εκπρόσωπο πολίσεων. Έναν εκπρόσωπο πολίσεων. Say, I'd like to speak with a sales representative. (laughs) 
Θα ήθελα να μιλήσω με έναν εκπρόσωπο πωλήσεων. Now say you want to talk to a sales representative and answer it. Θα ήθελα να μιλήσω με έναν εκπρόσωπο πωλήσεων. Μάλιστα, μια στιγμή παρακαλώ. Now, imagine you want to talk to the manager. Do you remember how to say the manager? Τον διευθυντή. Τον διευθυντή. Say, I'd like to speak with the manager. Θα ήθελα να μιλήσω με τον διευθυντή. Now say you want to talk to the manager and answer it. Θα ήθελα να μιλήσω με τον διευθυντή. Μάλιστα. Μια στιγμή παρακαλώ. Now imagine you want to talk to customer service. Do you remember how to say customer service? Την εξυπηρέτηση πελατών. Την εξυπηρέτηση πελατών. Say, I'd like to speak with customer service. Θα ήθελα να μιλήσω με την εξυπηρέτηση πελατών. Now say you want to talk to customer service and answer it. Θα ήθελα να μιλήσω με την εξυπηρέτηση πελατών. Μάλιστα, μια στιγμή παρακαλώ. When learning a new language, everyone should have an ultimate goal to work towards. Whether you want to be able to connect with a relative, easily order food while traveling, or go somewhere new, having an end goal for your learning can be very motivating. A popular but challenging goal is being able to speak like a native speaker. It's difficult to measure exactly when you reach this goal, and it's not something you can pick up using textbooks alone. So how do you work on making your speech more natural? That's what we're going to look at today. Here are three tips to help you practice talking like a native speaker. Number one, focus on vocabulary. If your goal is to speak like a native, you might be really focused on speaking quickly or using as many complex grammar patterns as possible. But in our native languages, we're not always trying to speak as fast as possible. And we use complex grammar patterns when necessary, not to show off. Vocabulary, however, is extremely important to expressing ourselves naturally. Your choice of words can reveal a lot about you and your understanding of the language. Most learners have had the experience of using a phrasebook or a dictionary to find a word they want to use, trying the word in conversation, and getting a look of confusion from the native speaker. In some cases, although your word choice may be grammatically correct, the word may be inappropriate for the situation or totally unnatural. This is especially important in business and other formal situations, where the right level of formality and professionalism is key. Being able to understand nuances in vocabulary words can also help you understand relationships between people just by listening to the conversation. Try to listen to many different types of conversations. Listen to how people talk to their friends, their superiors, and in customer service situations. This will give you a better idea of how to talk to others naturally. In some languages, you can omit words from sentences or use more direct communication styles. It's important to be aware of these things so you can apply them yourself. Colloquialisms and slang are also commonly used in most languages. As this sort of vocabulary is always evolving, it can be difficult to keep up with the latest words. Talk with native speakers and consume media in your target language to make sure you pick up these kinds of expressions. Media is a great resource for your learning. Ultimately, knowing the appropriate vocabulary to use for each situation will really help you sound more knowledgeable. Number two, perfect your accent. With every language, there are unique pronunciation and intonation challenges. Some languages are tonal languages, and a change in pitch can completely change the meaning of a word. Then there's the fact that most countries have multiple dialects, and so people from one area of the country may sound different from those in another. So what is the best way to listen to a wide range of accents and different pronunciations? Video and audio resources are a great way to do this. YouTube is a perfect place to start because people from all kinds of different backgrounds upload videos to the platform. You can watch educational videos, daily life vlogs, cooking shows, a travel series, whatever interests you. Pay attention to the different ways people speak. 
everyone is unique. And then practice speaking like them. This kind of practice can help you sound more natural. One note, please be aware of the type of resources you're using. For example, if you find a video where a speaker uses a rare dialect, it might not be a good idea to use that for your pronunciation practice, unless you have a special reason for studying a specific accent. As a general rule, it's best to try to search for practice resources that use a standard form of the language you're studying. Number three, copy what you hear. Do you remember how you learned to speak as a child? We rarely learned new words just listening to them or reading after we learned how. When we were little kids, we imitated the sounds we heard by repeating the sounds out loud. While you're talking to a friend, watching videos, or listening to audio in your target language, you can do this to try and replicate the way they speak. Doing this will help you work on mastering the flow of the language, your accent, intonation, and pronunciation. Of course, you might also pick up some new vocabulary this way. Make sure to repeat new words often. It's a great way to make sure you remember them. Try doing this using a number of different mediums and sources. That way, you'll be exposed to the diversity that the language offers and master the fundamentals of pronunciation. For example, you can watch and imitate several different YouTube videos and audio CDs, but try a few different sources, like different creators or different audio types, to make sure you experience a wide range of communication in your target language. If you're using our language learning program, you can even get your own teacher with Premium Plus. Your teacher can answer questions, give assignments, and even listen to your recordings and give you advice on pronunciation. Completing these kinds of lessons with a native teacher can really boost your confidence in your speaking skills. Becoming able to speak like a native is a popular goal for many people learning a new language. It feels great to be able to communicate smoothly, especially when the people you're talking to expect basic level sentences or broken communication. Try using the tips we've shared in this video to work on improving your speaking skills. Of course, it'll take time and persistence, but the reward will be more natural communication. And for even more tips on speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again, and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder, which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon. 
listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye! Oh, η πρώην κοπέλα μου. Α, Πέτρο, είσαι καλά? Ναι, είμαι καλά. Αυτή είναι η κοπέλα μου η Έλλη. Είναι από την Καλαμάτα. Ωραία. Χαίρο πολύ. Είστε εδώ για διακοπές. Ναι. Πέτρο, είμαι κουρασμένη. Πάμε στο ξενοδοχείο. Ναι, πάμε. Περίμενε. Αυτό είναι το τηλέφωνο μου. 2 1 0 7 7 0 7 7 Έξι, τρία, οκτώ. Εντάξει. Και το κινητό μου είναι έξι, εννέα, τρία, δύο, πέντε, 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 εννέα, ένα, μηδέν. Ωραία. Είναι εύκολο. Έξι, εννέα, τρία, δύο, τρεις φορές. Το πέντε, εννέα, ένα, μηδέν. Ευχαριστώ. Ποιο είναι το τηλέφωνο σου? Δεν το θυμάμαι. Λυπάμαι. Πάμε. Παρακαλώ. Μία πορτοκαλάδα, παρακαλώ. Εγώ θέλω ένα νερό. Αυτά είναι όλα? Ναι. Βεβαίως. Ορίστε η πορτοκαλάδα, το νερό και ο λογαριασμός. Ζέστη, ε. Ναι, κάνει πολύ ζέστη. Μου αρέσει η ζέστη. Στη Γερμανία βρέχει τώρα και κάνει κρύο. Είσαι από τη Γερμανία. Ναι, από το Βερολίνο. Με λένε Αντρέα. Χαίρο πολύ, Αντρέα. Εγώ είμαι η Έλλη. Και εγώ είμαι ο Πέτρος. Χαίρο πολύ. Είστε από την Αθήνα. Όχι, κάνουμε διακοπές εδώ. Τι δουλειά κάνετε. Εγώ δουλεύω ως δάσκαλος. Η Έλλη σπουδάζει ακόμα. Πέτρος Αντωνίου. Ένα δίκλινο παρακαλώ. Βεβαίως. Αντωνίου, λυπάμε, δεν βλέπω την κράτησή σας. Περίεργο. Ναι, λυπάμαι πολύ. Θέλετε ένα δίκλινο. Ναι, θέλουμε ένα δίκλινο για μία εβδομάδα. Έχετε. Έχουμε άλλο ένα δίκλινο, το εννιά. Έχει ζεστό νερό. Βεβαίως. Έχει ζεστό νερό, κλιματιστικό, τηλεόραση και μίνι μπαρ. Πόσο κάνει. 50 euro. In this video, you'll have a chance to test them out with a quiz. First, you'll see an image and hear a question. Next comes a short dialogue. Listen carefully and see if you can answer correctly. We'll show you the answer at the end. Are you ready? Μια γυναίκα ρωτάει κάτι έναν υπάλληλο καταστήματος σε ένα βιβλιοπωλείο. Ποιο βιβλίο θέλει να δει η γυναίκα Συγγνώμη, θα ήθελα να ρίξω μια ματιά σε ένα βιβλίο σε αυτό το ράφι εκεί. Ποιο βιβλίο θα θέλατε? Αυτό σχετικά με τα αυτοκίνητα. Μια στιγμή παρακαλώ. Αυτό? Ναι, αυτό είναι. Ορίστε.
Ποιο βιβλίο θέλει να δει η γυναίκα? Μια γυναίκα ρωτάει κάτι έναν υπάλληλο καταστήματος σε ένα βιβλιοπωλείο. Ποιο βιβλίο θέλει να δει η γυναίκα? Συγγνώμη, θα ήθελα να ρίξω μια ματιά σε ένα βιβλίο σε αυτό το ράφι εκεί. Ποιο βιβλίο θα θέλατε? Αυτό σχετικά με τα αυτοκίνητα. Μια στιγμή παρακαλώ. Αυτό? Ναι, αυτό είναι. Ορίστε. Ένας άντρας και μια γυναίκα κοιτάζουν τον κατάλογο σε ένα εστιατόριο. Τι θα παραγγείλει ο άντρας? Τι θα παραγγείλεις? Η πίτσα φαίνεται νόστιμη. Νομίζω αυτό θα παραγγείλω. Έφαγα πίτσα χτες, οπότε... Οκ, okay. τότε τι λες για χάμπουργκερ? Καλό φαίνεται. Αυτό θα πάρω. Τι θα παραγγείλει ο άντρας? Ένας άντρας και μια γυναίκα κοιτάζουν τον κατάλογο σε ένα εστιατόριο. Τι θα παραγγείλει ο άντρας? Τι θα παραγγείλεις? Η πίτσα φαίνεται νόστιμη. Νομίζω αυτό θα παραγγείλω. Έφαγα πίτσα χτες, οπότε... Οκ, okay. τότε τι λες για χάμπουργκερ? Καλό φαίνεται. Αυτό θα πάρω. Ένα άντρα τηλεφωνεί το ιατρείο. Μέχρι τι ώρα πρέπει να είναι στο ιατρείο? Γεια σας, πώς μπορώ να σας βοηθήσω? Τι ώρα κλείνετε σήμερα? Κλείνουμε στις έξι, αλλά παρακαλώ περάστε πριν τις πεντέμιση. Εντάξει, σας ευχαριστώ. Μέχρι τι ώρα πρέπει να είναι στο ιατρείο? Ένα άντρα τηλεφωνεί το ιατρείο. Μέχρι τι ώρα πρέπει να είναι στο ιατρείο? Γεια σα, πώ μπορώ να σα βοηθήσω. Τι ώρα κλείνετε σήμερα? Κλείνουμε στις 6, αλλά παρακαλώ περάστε πριν τις 5.30. Εντάξει. Σας ευχαριστώ. Ένα αγόρι διαβάζει το ημερολόγιο του. Ποιο ήταν το πρώτο πράγμα που το αγόρι έκανε σήμερα? Ο καιρός ήταν καταπληκτικός σήμερα. Το απόγευμα πήγα για κολύμπη στην πισίνα. Πήγα και σινεμά το βραδάκι. Επίσης, μελετούσα όλο το πρωί. Σήμερα δεν ήταν και άσχημα. Ποιο ήταν το πρώτο πράγμα που το αγόρι έκανε σήμερα? Ένα αγόρι διαβάζει το ημερολόγιο του. Ποιο ήταν το πρώτο πράγμα που το αγόρι έκανε σήμερα? Ο καιρός ήταν καταπληκτικός σήμερα. Το απόγευμα πήγα για κολύμπη στην πισίνα. Πήγα και σινεμά το βραδάκι. Επίσης, μελετούσα όλο το πρωί. Σήμερα δεν ήταν και άσχημα. Hi, welcome to Introduction to Greek. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Chrissy. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Greek grammar. We won't be going into too much depth because it's impossible to condense everything into one short video lesson. But this video will give you a good idea of the main points of Greek grammar. The Greek language has one of the most extensive vocabularies in the world. All Greek words can be categorized into 10 different parts of speech. 
Furthermore, the Greek parts of speech are separated into inflected and non-inflected. You might be wondering, what is inflection exactly? Inflection is the modification of a word to express things such as tense, number, person, and more. The inflection of verbs is called conjugation. The inflection of articles, nouns, adjectives, and pronouns is called declension. When a word is not inflected, it means that its form never changes in speech. The Greek inflected types of speech are the articles, nouns, adjectives, pronouns, verbs, and participles. The Greek non-inflected types of speech are the adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. Greek has also some small non-inflected words called particles. However, particles are not considered a part of speech. In this video, we won't focus on non-inflected words because their use is very straightforward. Instead, we'll focus on declension and conjugation, which are more complex processes. In Greek, articles, nouns, adjectives, pronouns, and the passive voice participles are declinable. That means that they have different forms, just like the English noun cat changes to cats in the plural. The whole set of different forms that a declinable word may present in Greek is called declension. Or klisi, literally meaning inclination. And each different form a declinable word may have is called case. Or ptosi, literally meaning fall. There are four cases in Greek, the nominative, the genitive, the accusative, and the vocative case. In Greek, the nominative case has always been considered a direct case or orthiptosi, together with a vocative. The genitive and the accusative, on the other hand, were always considered to be oblique cases, or pliestosis. But what do direct and oblique mean here? Well, let's remember the inclination and fall concept for a moment. If you set up a thin stick vertically on the ground, it won't stand, it'll fall. The nominative case, being the direct case or straight case, indicates the form of a word that is the base, the starting point. This is like the moment when the stick is standing straight before it starts falling. Declinable words are always in the nominative form in dictionaries. In ancient times, the vocative was identical to the nominative. So the vocative is still considered a direct case, although today there may be some differences between the two cases. Imagine now that the standing stick starts falling. During the fall, its position constantly changes in relationship to its starting point until it falls flat on the ground. Declinable words change too in relationship to their starting point, the nominative case. So the oblique cases, or bent cases, represent the form of a word that is not the base, like when the stick is already inclined and falling. These are the genitive and the accusative cases. The whole idea of declension, cases, and different forms of the same word may seem strange to an English speaker because English lost its case system almost completely. However, we can still see some declension happening to words, such as the personal pronouns. For example, I, he, she, we, and they can change to me, him, her, us, and them. In the phrase, she loves him, she denotes the subject, while him denotes the object. Similarly, the Greek case system exists in order to indicate certain grammatical relationships among the words of a sentence, like the subject, object, and more. It's actually because of the case system that word order in Greek sentences is relatively flexible. For example, in English, the sentences the cat eats the mouse and the mouse eats the cat mean different things. By swapping the nouns cat and mouse, the meaning changes completely. However, in Greek, the meaning wouldn't change because the form itself of a word shows us whether it's the subject or the object. The word order depends on what the speaker wants to emphasize as the first word gets more attention. So the second sentence is actually more like saying, it is the mouse that the cat eats. The grammatical case is the first characteristic of declension. The other two characteristics are gender and number. There are three genders in Greek masculine, feminine, and neuter. All declinable words, including articles, are gendered. For example, in Greek, the definite article the comes in all three genders. O, e, to. 
And just like in English, there are singular and plural forms. So in the plural form, the Greek definite articles become i, i, ta. If we also add the forms for each case, then these are all the possible forms a definite article may have in speech. Note that definite articles don't have a vocative case form. Another thing to keep in mind about articles is that they need to have the same case, gender, and number as the words they define. For example, nouns and adjectives. The same goes for all declinable words that define each other. Now let's move on to the conjugation of verbs. Again, the word conjugation in Greek is called klisi. Greek verbs are divided into two main conjugation groups depending on their main ending. There's conjugation A and conjugation B. Furthermore, conjugation B has two subgroups, first and second class. The conjugation group is one of the characteristics of a verb. There are six more characteristics that you need to keep in mind. The person, number, mood, tense, voice, and the diathesis. Just like in English, there are three persons, first, second, and third, for I, you, and he, she, it. There are two numerical forms, singular and plural, and two voices, active and passive. As for the tenses, there are eight tenses in Greek. The present tense, which makes no distinction between the simple or continuous present, the past continuous, the simple past, the future continuous, the simple future, the perfect, the past perfect, and the future perfect tense. Please keep in mind that in Greek, it's not always necessary to add the personal pronoun. That's because unlike English, verbs have a different form for each person, so the verb form itself shows us which person we're talking about. If pronouns are used, those are to make the context more clear or for emphasis. Next, the mood of a verb has to do with the way the verb is presented. A verb might be presented as something real, that is a fact, as something we expect or wish to happen, or as a command, among others. There are five moods in Greek, but we won't go into detail at this moment. Lastly, diathesis, literally meaning disposition, has to do with the meaning of a verb and the type of action it describes. For example, it might show us that the subject is doing an action, that the subject is acting upon itself, that someone else is acting upon the subject, or that the subject is simply in a particular state. With these basic grammar points in mind, you know what to expect once you start studying Greek grammar. Now, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned the Greek parts of speech as well as which ones are inflected and which ones are not. We introduced you to the basic characteristics of declension and conjugation. You also learned that due to declension, word order is flexible in Greek. We've covered only the very basics of Greek grammar. If you're interested in more Greek, check out our Greek in 3 Minutes video series. In that course, we teach you useful phrases and each lesson is only 3 minutes long. Bye! Yahara. Want to speak real Greek from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at greekpod101.com. To master a new language and understand everything as soon as you hear it, to read with just a quick glance and speak smoothly without thinking, you need to review. Here are our top five review tactics. Number one, listen to examples over and over again. By listening closely and often, you start to pick up the rhythm of a language, as well as correct pronunciation from a native speaker. Use our line-by-line -line feature that lets you both listen and read along. Use this tool to practice as much as possible. Number two, use our voice recording tool to master perfect pronunciation. Record yourself and compare it against the native speaker. If you sound different, then repeat after the native speaker until you're able to match them. Use our voice recording feature, which makes recording super easy. Number three, master your recorded conversations. Record conversations and go over them again and again. Master entire conversations and repeat them line by line. Use any of the dialogues available for download on our website. 
These come with transcripts of the entire conversation. Number four, use mobile devices to reinforce previously learned conversations. Constant review is the best way to progress in your language studies. Download the recorded dialogue to your mobile device and incorporate it into your music playlist. Quick reviews throughout the day effectively reinforce what you've learned. Number five, read with line-by-line -line notes. Read along with a native speaker to really master pronunciation and natural intonation. You should start slow at first, then slowly increase your speed. Your pronunciation will become more natural. You will also see that your ability to understand fluent speakers will greatly increase. You'll be able to improve your communication skills using these five simple review techniques. Increase your understanding of your target language. And remember, if you're interested in getting all these review tools, sign up for your free lifetime account. No credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start reviewing more every day. Hi everybody, Stefania here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Greek questions. The question for this lesson is, how can I tell if a noun is masculine, feminine, or neuter? I get this question all the time. If the noun is in its dictionary form, in other words, in the nominative case, and is accompanied by a definite or indefinite article, then the article will indicate the noun's gender. Now, if the noun is not accompanied by an article, and especially when it is in an inflected form, then the gender might not be obvious. However, if you become familiar with the most common noun endings and declension patterns, you should be able to tell the gender in most cases. Let's get into more detail. First, let's see what are the most common masculine, feminine, and neuter noun endings. The following endings are the most common masculine endings in the nominative case. Os, like ilos, son. As, like pateras, father. Is, like mathitis, student. Es, like cafés, coffee. Us, like papus, grandfather. And eas, like cureas, barber. Some common feminine nouns have the following endings in the nominative case. Os, like odos, street. A, like mitera, mother. E like agapi, love. U like maimu, monkey. And O like hijo, echo. The following endings are the most common neuter endings in the nominative case. Os like dasos, forest. O like nero, water. E like pedi, child. Ma like pragma, thing. Imo like grapsimo, writing. Sigma like fos, light. And ni like parelthon. Past. Here are some sample sentences. O pateras ki mitera pezun me topeditus. The father and the mother are playing with their child. O turistas fotografizi mia mai musto dasos. The tourist is taking pictures of a monkey in the forest. To follow this up, how can you tell the gender of os ending nouns? As you've noticed, the os ending can be found in nouns of all genders. So when you see this, you can't really guess the gender if there is no article or another helpful word around. However, here's a tip. If the noun is accented in the last syllable, you can be sure that this noun is not neuter. Another important thing to know is that there are many os ending nouns that are both masculine and feminine. Those usually denote a profession, such as o i iatros, doctor, or o i vikigoros, lawyer. Let's see some examples. Iatros paratiritis actinografias. The doctor is observing the x-rays. O dikigoros milais ton dikasti. The lawyer is speaking to the judge. Finally, what are some uncommon noun endings? There are only a few specific native Greek nouns that have uncommon endings, like the irregular masculine noun mis, muscle, ending in is, the neuter ipar, liver, and pir, fire, that end in ro. The neuter gala, milk, that ends in a, and the neuter oxy, acid, dori, spare, and imisi, half, that end in y. Also, the names of the letters of the alphabet are all neuter nouns, even the ones that end in a, like alpha and vita. 
Finally, there are many loan words that have not been adapted to the Greek declension system, so they don't get inflected, and they usually have uncommon or confusing endings, like the dual gender indeclinable noun detective, ending in vita. So loan words will always be more challenging when it comes to guessing the gender. Here are two more examples. Tomoro pini poli gala. The baby drinks a lot of milk. I detective parokoluthun en anipopto. The detectives are following a suspect. I'm sure after a lesson like this, you might be freaking out. But if you're a beginner or an absolute beginner, you don't need to know all of this right away. A tip that will make your life easier down the road is when you study vocabulary, focus on the endings of words and always, always memorize declinable words together with their articles, especially nouns. Do that at least for the os ending nouns or other nouns you feel you might get confused. Don't just memorize milk as gala. You should memorize it as to gala. Otherwise, you might mistake it for a feminine noun because it ends in a. How was the lesson? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Yahara! Hi everybody, Stefania here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Greek questions. The question for this lesson is, how do you use Greek definite articles? Just like in English, we use Greek definite articles to talk about specific people, animals, things, or concepts, so they need to be defined. Greek has three different definite articles, o, i, and to, for the masculine, feminine, and neuter genders respectively. They are inflected, so their forms can change. An article defines a noun and it needs to always agree with it in gender, number and case. However, instead of a noun, we could use any nominalized word or phrase to act like a noun. Let's go into more detail. First, let's see when we use the Greek definite articles. In Greek, we use them more often than their English equivalent, the. So while in English we say, I like tennis, in Greek we say, to tennis, literally, I like the tennis because we are specifying which sport we like. We even use articles in front of days of the week, months, years, festivals, seasons, and proper names of places or people. For example, ο Γιάννης είναι εδώ. The John is here. However, when we address that person directly, we don't use an article and we form the name in the vocative case. For example, Γιάννη, έλα εδώ. John, come here. Notice how Yanis in the nominative case changed to Yani in the vocative case. Here are some sample sentences. Ποιος είναι η Μαρία? Who is it? It's Maria. Την Κυριακή τα παιδιά πηγαίνουν εκδρομές. On Sunday, the kids go on excursions. Ο εκτυπωτής εκτυπώνει ένα έγγραφο. The printer is printing a document. Πήρε τηλέφωνο η γυναίκα. The woman called. Here are some more uses of the definite article. Number one. Between a noun and the demonstrative pronouns αυτός, αυτή, αυτό, ετούτος, ετούτη, ετούτο, and εκείνος, εκείνη, εκείνο. For example, αυτή η γυναίκα. This woman. Number two. Between a noun and the adjectives όλος and ολόκληρος. For example, όλη τάξη, the whole class, and ολόκληρος ο κόσμος, the whole world. However, ολόκληρος might not always require an article. For example, περιμένω ολόκληρες ώρες, I've been waiting for hours. Number three, with a noun denoting something very specific followed by a possessive pronoun. For example, το βιβλίο μου, my book. Number four, when talking about a rate. For example, πέντε ώρες την ημέρα, five hours per day. Number five, in sequences of nouns, for example, οι άντρες και γυναίκες, the men and women. Number six, with abstract nouns, nouns denoting substances, and with nouns and adjectives in the plural, when they denote a very specific entity. For example, η υπομονή είναι χρυσός, patience is gold, το ξύλο καίγεται εύκολα, wood burns easily, and τα παιδιά είναι το μέλλον, children are the future. Number seven, when we want to treat as a noun a different type of word or even a whole phrase. In that case, we use the neuter article. For example, Τι θα φέρει το αύριο? What will tomorrow bring? Ποια είναι η σημασία του βλέπω? 
What's the meaning of to see? And το ότι καπνίζεις με απογοητεύει. The fact that you smoke disappoints me. Finally, let's see some cases where you don't need a definite article. The most common cases are with the subject or object of a sentence when we are talking about it generally or when we don't want to define it as something or someone specific. For example, υπάρχει περίπτωση ανθρώπου που γύρισε στη ζωή. There is a case of a man that came back to life. And πήρα αυτοκίνητο. I bought a car. Next, in predicates when we give an attribute to something or someone. Predicates are connected with the subject through a linking verb, like the verb to be. For example, αυτή είναι δασκάλα. She is a teacher. Finally, in similes after σαν, meaning as or like. For example, ψηλό σαν κυπαρίς, tall like a cypress tree. No article is also used when talking about items or substances that have no specific amount. For example, το μωρό θέλει γάλα. The baby wants some milk. Here are some sample sentences. Ο γιος μου έγινε γιατρός. My son became a doctor. Πήρα προαγωγή. I got a promotion. It takes some time to get comfortable with all the uses of articles, as they might be affected by other parts of speech, such as prepositions. But I think the points I mentioned are the most basic and important ones to keep in mind when you are just starting to learn Greek. How was the lesson? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Yahara! Hi everybody, Stefania here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Greek questions. The question for this lesson is, how do you use the verb areso? The verb areso, to like, is not used the same way as in English. While in English we say, I like the ice cream, a typical SVO structure, subject, verb, object, in Greek we don't say, εγώ areso το παγωτό, we say, μου αρέσει το παγωτό. This is an OVS structure, but there is more to know here than just reversing the order of the sentence's elements. Let's go into more detail. First, let's see the basic things you need to know about the verb areso. In a previous video, I mentioned that while most Greek transitive verbs get a direct object in the accusative case, there are a few transitive verbs that get a direct object in genitive. The verb areso falls into this latter category. Its object is usually a weak personal pronoun in genitive, for example, μου, me, σου, you, του, him, this, her, mas, us, sas, you, and tus, them. Such a direct object in genitive can be replaced by a similar prepositional phrase, in the case of areso, by se plus a pronoun, a noun, or a name in accusative. For example, Στη Μαρία αρέσει το παγωτό. Mary likes ice cream. For the negation in the indicative mood, we place the negation particle then, meaning not, immediately before the verb, unless the object is a weak pronoun. In that case, the pronoun stands between the verb and then. Two examples are Δεν μας αρέσουν οι ταινίες τρόμου. We don't like scary movies. Σε εμάς δεν αρέσουν οι ταινίες τρόμου. We don't like scary movies. Next, you need to know these two golden rules. Unless the subject of a sentence is a whole phrase, number one, it needs to agree with the verb in person and number. And number two, it is always in the nominative case. Let's take a look at our first example. Although in English it is I who likes ice cream, so I is the subject, in Greek that's not what happens. The verb αρέσει is in the third person, which means the subject is not I. Surprised? Actually, the subject here is το παγωτό, which is in the nominative case. If this doesn't make sense to you, think of this sentence like this. The ice cream is of my liking. Here, the subject is ice cream, not I. So just remember, with αρέσω, the subject in English is the object in Greek, and the English object is the Greek subject. Here is another sample sentence. Μας αρέσει αυτή δασκάλα. We like this teacher. Some other things to remember are Number one, in the case of μου αρέσει, I like, and σου αρέσει, 
you like, the final vowels of the weak personal pronouns can be replaced by an apostrophe. Maresi, saresi. Number two, word order is relatively flexible in Greek, but there can never be anything between the weak pronoun and the verb. For example, you can reverse the phrase and say, to pagoto muaresi, I like ice cream, if you want to emphasize that it is ice cream that you like as opposed to something else. But you can't say, mu to pagoto aresi, I ice cream like. Number three, in addition to the weak pronoun, there might be also a nominal phrase or a strong personal pronoun in the genitive case within the phrase. This happens for emphasis reasons. For example, Maresi to pagoto emena. I like ice cream. Tis Marias tis ares to pagoto. Mary likes ice cream. Number four. The Greek subject might be a whole phrase. For example, it can be a phrase in subjunctive. Muaresi to nakimame. I like to sleep. I like sleeping. When reversing the word order in this sentence, you have to use the neuter article to before the subject, which it is usually omitted otherwise. Like in... Here are some more sample sentences that use phrasal subjects. Tu arese tan vrechi. He likes it when it rains. Tis arese pou tis diavazo paramithia kathe vradi. She likes it that I read to her fairy tales every night. Keep in mind that in this case, the phrase might refer to a different person than what the object denotes. For example, mu arese na kimase. A sentence like this is translated as I like you to sleep. How was the lesson? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Yahara! Mathemo Inika Monosmo. I'm learning Greek all by myself. Let's move on to the next phrase. Mathemo Inika Monosmo. I'm learning Greek all by myself. If you're a woman, you can say, I don't think I could ever learn a language. Uh, I like being in a class with a teacher and classmates, uh, but some people manage to learn things on their own, which is amazing. I wish I had the discipline it takes to do that. There's so many languages I would like to learn. It took me only one year to become fluent. It took me only one year to become fluent. People will get very impressed for sure if you manage to do that. We Greeks consider our language to be quite difficult to learn. I can memorize around 50 new Greek words a day. I can memorize around 50 new Greek words a day. That is a lot. I can watch Greek movies without subtitles. I can watch Greek movies without subtitles. If you can do that, then congratulations, you are fluent, my friend, and you don't need me anymore. Σε τρία χρόνια θα μιλάω ελληνικά σαν να ήταν η μητρική μου γλώσσα. I'll speak Greek like a native speaker in three years. Σε τρία χρόνια θα μιλάω ελληνικά σαν να ήταν η μητρική μου γλώσσα. I'll speak Greek like a native speaker in three years. Sounds like a big challenge. You think you can do it? Έχω μάθει να τραγουδάω τον εθνικό ύμνο. I learned how to sing the Greek national anthem. Έχω μάθει να τραγουδάω τον εθνικό ύμνο. I learned how to sing the Greek national anthem. Do you know the title of the Greek national anthem? It's called Hymnos Istin Eleftherian, meaning Hymn to Liberty or Hymn to Freedom. And it was written by the poet Dionysius Solomos and was put to music by Nikolaos Manzaros. 
When sung, the anthem consists of two stanzas, or verses as they call it in music. Although normally the poem consists of 158 stanzas, making it the longest in text national anthem in the world. I bet you didn't know that. Praises for surviving back to school. A little crazy. But anyway, this is the lesson for today. Ten phrases for surviving back to school. I don't get this. How we will survive back to school? How anyone can survive back to school? Anyway, I should stop drinking coffee. Eh? Very hyper today. Let's start. Number one. Saikidio. Backpack. Saikidio. Backpack. Κάθε χρόνο της αρέσει να έχει καινούριο σακίδιο για το σχολείο. Every year she likes to have a new backpack for the school. Everyone likes to have a new backpack. Even me, that I'm not going to the school, I want every three months to change backpack. It's a normal thing. It's not only for the school. <laughs> Συμμαθητής. Classmate. Συμμαθητής. Classmate. Ποιοι από τους συμμαθητές σου θα πάνε στο party? Which classmates of yours are going to the party? Important question. Remember it in Greek. Μαθήματα. Homework. Μαθήματα. Homework. A lot of homework. Έχεις κάνει τα μαθήματά σου. Have you done your homework? This question I really hate it. I always was hearing for 20 years. Have you done? Have you done? Anyway, I always did my homeworks. And I'm still doing my homeworks. Hope you do also. And learn fast the Greek language so to communicate easier. Εξέταση. Exam. Εξέταση. Exam. Οι εξετάσεις του πρώτου τριμήνου θα γίνουν τον Νοέμβριο. The exams of the first trimester will take place in November. Every three months we have exams. And every six months we have the major exams. And every year we have the crucial exams. So remember this. Εξέταση. Plural, εξετάσεις. Καλοκαιρινές διακοπές. Summer break. Oh, my favorite. Καλοκαιρινές διακοπές. Summer break. This is also a song in Greece, by the way. Επιστροφή στο σχολείο μετά τις καλοκαιρινές διακοπές είναι πάντα δύσκολη. The return to school after the summer break is always difficult. I know what to do. Σχολείο. School. Σχολείο. School. You can guess. It's easy. Το σχολείο χρειάζεται καλύτερο εξοπλισμό για το χημείο. The school needs better equipment for the chemistry lab. Of course it needs. Every school needs for the physics, for the mathematician and for the chemistry. Every year they have to renew. Σπουδάζω. To study. Σπουδάζω. To study. Σκέφτεται να σπουδάσει διοίκηση επιχειρήσεων. She is thinking of studying business management. This is what I'm doing. Business management. Especially in touristic um, sector. Είμαστε στην ίδια τάξη. We are in the same class. Είμαστε στην ίδια τάξη. We are in the same class, not for long. If you don't pass the exams, you will not be in the same class. Ποια μαθήματα παρακολουθείς? What classes are you taking? Ποια μαθήματα παρακολουθείς? What classes are you taking? And you answer, none of your business. This is rude, eh? very rude. Don't do this. Τελείωσες τα μαθήματά σου? Did you finish your homework? Τελείωσες τα μαθήματά σου? Did you finish your homework? This is a rhetorical question that's happening from your parents. So be aware of what you will answer. Eh? <laughs> It's a rhetorical question. 10 questions you should know. These are good icebreaker questions that you can ask when speaking casually to someone or that others can ask you. So let's start. Pose Lene. What's your name? There are a few ways you can ask someone's name in Greek, but the most common one is Πώς σε λένε, πώς σε λένε, what's your name? If your name is Stella, you can answer by saying, με λένε Stella. My name is Stella. Basically, it doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl. You can always use the part με λένε and just add your name the way you pronounce it in your language. What I mean is that you don't convert it to a Greek name. I say this because many of you ask me, What's my name in Greek? Some names do have an equivalent, usually Christian names such as George or Catherine. Uh, but to be honest, it's, it's best to use, it's best to just use your name as it is. Tikanis, how are you? Let's move on to the next question, which is, I think, the most frequently used in everyday life. And that is, Tikanis, 
How are you? Τι κάνεις? You can use it when you meet someone, when you are talking on the phone, or when you are texting someone. Sometimes Greeks don't even say hi and jump straight to τι κάνεις or op τι κάνεις. That op is an exclamation like hey. A common and polite answer to this is καλά, ευχαριστώ. I'm fine, thanks. Τι κάνεις? Καλά, ευχαριστώ. Από πού είσαι? Where are you from? Από πού είσαι? Where are you from? If someone asks this question to you, then they probably want to know which country you're from. If you are in Greece and you ask one of the locals, then they will probably tell you which city, town or island they are from. For example, είμαι από την Αθήνα. I'm from Athens. Πότε είναι τα γενεθλιά σου? When is your birthday? Πότε είναι τα γενεθλιά σου? When is your birthday? Πότε είναι τα γενέθλιά σου. If your birthday is, say, on the 25th of April, you can say είναι στις 25 Απριλίου. It's on the 25th of April. You will always need to use the prepositional article στις before the day of the month, except if you were born on the first day of the month. In that case, you need to say την πρώτη, meaning On the first. That's because you need the singular and not the plural. Pumenis. Where do you live? Pumenis. Where do you live? It's good to wait a little before asking this question. Otherwise, people might think you're being indiscreet. A typical answer would be Menos στο Ηράκλειο. I live in Heraklion. Here, the article sto might vary depending on the city or location as it will always have to match the gender of that word. Πού δουλεύεις? Where do you work? Πού δουλεύεις? Where do you work? Πού δουλεύεις? Another question that might sound a bit indiscreet. Perhaps asking first, με τι ασχολείσαι? What's your occupation? Might be a good idea. A common answer could be, δουλεύω για μια εταιρεία κινητής τηλεφωνίας. I work for a mobile communications company. If that person doesn't mention the company name, this means they want to keep it for themselves. But if you are really curious and want to be nosy, nonetheless, then you can go ahead and ask Ya pia for which company? Okay, moving on. Pio to telefono su? What's your phone number? Let's say you met someone really interesting and you want to keep in touch. You'll want to ask for their phone number. In that case, you can say, Ποιο είναι το τηλέφωνο σου? What's your phone number? Ποιο είναι το τηλέφωνο σου? And the other person can say, Το τηλέφωνο μου είναι το 555 0376. My phone number is 555-0376. This actually sounds like a Hollywood movie phone number. In Greece, numbers don't start with 555. Mobile numbers start with 6 and landlines with 2, usually. The country code is plus 30 if you dial from abroad. And that was the useless fact of the day, courtesy of your Greek teacher, me. Πού έμαθες ελληνικά? Where did you learn Greek? Πού έμαθες ελληνικά? Where did you learn Greek? Πού έμαθες ελληνικά? This is a question you will probably get a lot. You can say, έμαθα ελληνικά κάνοντας ιδιαίτερα μαθήματα. I learned Greek through private lessons. Or, έμαθα ελληνικά με το GreekPod101.com. I learned Greek with GreekPod101.com. Σου αρέσει το ελληνικό φαγητό? Do you like Greek food? Σου αρέσει το ελληνικό φαγητό? Do you like Greek food? Pretty sure most of you do. So you can say, ναι, μου αρέσει πολύ. Yes, I love it. If you don't like it, you can also say, ναι, μου αρέσει πολύ. Unless you purposely want people not to like you. In that case, you can say, όχι, δεν μου αρέσει. No, I don't like it. And open Pandora's box. 
I wouldn't want to argue about food with a Greek, so I'm just warning you. Έχεις πάει ποτέ στην Ελλάδα? Have you been to Greece? Έχεις πάει ποτέ στην Ελλάδα? Have you been to Greece? Obviously, a question others will ask you. If you haven't been to Greece, you can say something like Όχι, αλλά θα ήθελα να πάω. No, but I'd like to go. Who knows, maybe you'll get invited to someone's summer house. And foods that will kill you faster. Ενεργειακά ποτά Energy drinks Τα ενεργειακά ποτά περιέχουν υπερβολική ζάχαρη. Τα ενεργειακά ποτά περιέχουν υπερβολική ζάχαρη. Energy drinks contain too much sugar. I don't remember energy drinks being available in Greece when I was a kid. I think this became a trend later on, but overall, I don't think they are very popular in Greece, and that's a good thing. Επεξεργασμένο κρέας Processed meat Τα αλλαντικά είναι επεξεργασμένα κρέατα. Τα αλλαντικά είναι επεξεργασμένα κρέατα. Cold cuts are processed meats. Apart from ham, salami and mortadella, a popular type of cold cut in Greece is parisa, which is kind of like a bologna. We also have a smaller version of parisa, which we call parizaki, and it comes in a smaller tube, like a salami tube. Caramella. Candy. Μου αρέσουν οι καραμέλες με γεύση κανέλας. Μου αρέσουν οι Καραμέλες με γεύση κανέλας. I like cinnamon flavored candies. I personally stopped eating candy many years ago. But I guess one piece of candy once in a while is not going to kill you, right? Want to finally start speaking in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top seven ways to practice speaking on your own with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, shadowing. Shadowing is a proven learning technique where all you do is repeat what you hear in order to practice speaking. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to start. Then as you listen or watch, just repeat the conversations or even easier, read along out loud with the dialogue section. The script is right there in front of you. With our lessons, you can master entire conversations just like that. Number two, read out loud. I just mentioned it, but reading out loud is another powerful tactic and deserves its own mention. With every lesson, you get written transcripts and translations. So as you play the lesson, read the dialogue out loud as you hear it. Why? By reading out loud, you're also practicing your speaking skills. You can do this with the lesson notes, the lesson transcript, or the dialogue tool. With the dialogue tool, you can listen to each line again and again and repeat out loud until you master them all. Number three, speed up your reading to speed up your speaking. Being able to speak without thinking is a sign of language mastery. If you're talking to a native and can respond quickly, they'll assume that you're fairly fluent. How can you do this? When you read out loud, try increasing your speed a little bit every time. So start by reading with the dialogue tool. If you're like most learners, you'll read the first line slowly. That's because you're still getting used to the words, which is okay. Reread it. On your second try, you know most of the words and you'll read a little faster. Reread it again. On your third try, you'll be even faster at a native speaker's speed. And being able to read these phrases out loud and fast will help you speak fast. Number four, record and compare yourself with native speakers. In order to sound like a native speaker, you must imitate native speakers. So here's how. Access the voice recorder, which is in the dialogue study tool in every lesson. Click on the microphone icon, listen to the native speaker's audio, and then record yourself. You can then compare the two recordings side by side and practice and try again and again until you perfect your pronunciation. Number five, get feedback from our Premium Plus teacher. If you're learning by yourself and don't have access to real teachers, then you can always get feedback from our Premium Plus teachers. 
With the My Teacher tool, you can record yourself speaking and send the audio file to the teacher. They'll review it and tell you what to improve and how. That's it. Number six, level up your speaking with Premium Plus assignments. With Premium Plus, you can also get assignments that cover reading, writing, listening, and even speaking from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number seven, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons on speaking and conversations, visit our lesson library and under category, choose conversation. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons that are focused on speaking. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah, Lego Chrissy. Hi, everybody. I'm Chrissy. Welcome to GreekPod101.com's Elinika Setrialeta the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Greek. In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful to people by saying Evharisto. In this lesson, we'll learn some of the most common greetings used in Greece. Iste etimi? Are you ready? Ksekiname. So let's start. The most used informal greeting is ya. Ya. Ya means hi, hello, or goodbye. We use it when we meet, but also when we leave. We should only use this greeting with friends or relatives. If you want to be more formal, you need to pay attention to the time of day. The most common phrase is Kalimera. Kalimera. Literally, Kalimera means good day. However, we may also interpret it as good morning or good afternoon. As a rule of thumb, we can use Kalimera only during the daytime, from morning until early afternoon. During the late afternoon and evening, we say Kalispera. Kalispera. Espera or spera is ancient Greek for the part of the day after sunset. So Kalispera means good afternoon or good evening. Kalimera and Kalispera are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say them again. In this formal situation, Greek people use adio. Adio. Adieu means goodbye. If you're leaving after around 8 p.m., you can say Kalinichta, which literally means good night. Kalinichta. Finally, it is very common in Greek to use the informal hi we introduced in the beginning of this lesson as a parting greeting as well. Ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Greek. Let's review them all again. When greeting in an informal situation, we say ya. Yeah. When greeting in a formal situation, we say kalimera or kalispera. When leaving in a formal situation, adio. When leaving in an informal situation, ya. Yeah. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Chris's insights. In formal situations, Greek people commonly greet each other by shaking hands. On the other hand, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we kiss each other on both cheeks. Don't be afraid to do it with your Greek friends. It's normal. During the next lesson, we learn the meaning of the phrase Milata Aglika. Do you already know it? We'll be waiting to talk about it with you in our next Elinika Setria Lepta lesson. Yeah. Today we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly, and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. 
This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids. Words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start learning more every day. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.